Welcome to today's lecture, where we explore an extraordinary tale of resilience from the history of Spain, a story that offers potent insights into how individuals and communities can display resilience in the face of adversity. Let us take a step back into the late 15th and early 16th centuries. We're following the story of the Carvajal and Santa Maria family, a lineage blended with Jewish and Catholic origins. Amidst inc uh, increasing hostility towards Jews and conversos, those who had converted from Judaism to Christianity, they made an audacious wager to redefine their identity, to integrate their dual heritages, and to ascend to positions of religious and governmental leadership in service of Spanish Queen Isabel and King Ferdinand II. Despite the prevalent belief that ancestry and blood lineage define one's identity, and the discrimination they faced due to the principle of limpieza de sangre, blood purity, this family remained undeterred. Their resilience manifested in their ability to successfully conceal their Jewish past and foreground their Christian identity, enabling them to serve the church and the crown. Bernardino Lopez de Carvajal, a descendant of this family, even ascended the papal throne at the Schismatic Council of Pisa in 1511, opposing Pope Julius II. This resilience, however, was not without challenges. Their triumph was fleeting as Julius II recovered from a near fatal illness and French King Louis XII, Holy Roman Emperor Maximilian I, and Spanish King Ferdinand withdrew support from Bernardino. Coupled with unforeseen circumstances, the co-conspirators at the Council of Pisa failed to force Pope Julius out of office. Julius the second excommunicated them. But Bernardino and his associates rehabilitated themselves when Pope Leo X came to power, demonstrating their resilience and bouncing back from adversity. This marked the first instance of resilience, as Bernardino returned to a vibrant life as a cardinal, using his influence to contribute to critical decisions and constructions in the Catholic Church, even coming close to attaining the papacy once again. In his second bid for the papacy in 1522, uh, there was a roller coaster of fierce competition, tactical maneuvers, and near victory moments, all set amidst, amidst the backdrop of Europe's political turmoil. Despite consistently placing him on the top preferred papal candidates, Bernardino was thwarted by the emperor's instructions to support another candidate. In fact, it was Bernardino who provided the deciding vote for the next pope. He and the other candidate were tied 15 to 15 votes. In the early evening of January 9th, 1522, Bernardino walked over to Adrian Florence, the Cardinal of Tortosa, and indicated his vote with his feet. Adrian was elected Pope Adrian VI. Bernardino had done his duty. While he fell short of his ultimate goal, he navigated the complex political landscape with agility, always serving dutifully and loyally. While his quest for the papacy was not successful, Bernardino and his family made significant strides in overcoming barriers to their uh, advancement. Even as they faced constraints of the principle of limpieza de sangre, or blood purity, they effectively promoted their Christian identity, reaching unprecedented heights for a family of their lineage and their service to the Roman Catholic Church. In conclusion, the narrative of Bernardino and his family underscores the complex nature of resilience. Despite not reaching their ultimate goal, their journey was marked by notable accomplishments and served to challenge societal norms. Their resilience served not only as a personal tool for navigating adversity, but as a driving force for societal change. It's a reminder that success isn't always about reaching the ultimate goal, but about the resilience displayed and the advancements made along the way. This personal story about Bernardino's two attempts to capture the papacy, depicting a tenacious spirit grappling with his dual identity as a converso, a converted Jew, and the political intrigues of the 16th century Europe illustrates several critical facets of resilience. First, it shows the power of re redefining one's identity in the face of discrimination and adversity. This requires courage and adaptability and an unwavering belief in one's ability to change when necessary. Second, it underscores the value of fostering strong support networks. Bernardino's family collectively dedicated themselves to a shared goal, 
their unity, bolstering their resilience. Lastly, it highlights the importance of persistence. Even when they encountered setbacks, they found ways to rebound and to recover. But how can we apply these lessons to foster resilience in our personal lives and communities? Here are three key takeaways. Embrace adaptability. Just like the Carvajal Santa Maria family, we too can learn to adapt to changing circumstances, redefining ourselves and our goals when necessary. Foster unity and support. Our resilience is often a product of relationships and supportive networks we cultivate. Unity and collective effort can greatly enhance our capacity to overcome adversity. Persist in the face of setbacks. Even when we encounter setbacks, we must remember they're part of our journey. Learning to recover and move forward, as Bernardino did, is a crucial aspect of resilience. In conclusion, the story of the Carvajal Santa Maria family provides a compelling illustration of resilience in the face of adversity, their ability to redefine their identity, foster unity, and persist in the face of setbacks. And it offers important lessons for building personal and communal resilience. The saga of Bernardino and his family serves as a potent, a potent illustration of resilience, illustrating that even when our aspirations don't come to fruition, the journey to achieve them may yield substantial accomplishments and profound lessons.